Welcome to the video series, How to Build Your Food Truck with me, Frank Baltieres. And today we're starting the video off a little different. I'm not on location behind me with the food truck or a food trailer, but you see beautiful downtown Miami right here. And I'm glad I came because I just had an eye-opening experience. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled to other places of the country and just tried out different foods on how you can improve your menu in your food truck. Because one of the biggest things that we always ask ourselves is, what can we add to the menu to bring in more customers? And today I had that experience. And next year for the next season, because I'm not gonna switch my menu for this season for rolling burritos, I will be adding something new next year because I just had that eye-opening experience today. So I'm not gonna babble too much about where I, uh, where I am and what I'm doing, but I wanna help you guys out build your food truck. So on this video today, we're gonna be talking about the electrical the water tanks and I just finished up the flooring and man it looks nice I love this coin gray uh, rubber flooring it, it, I think it really provides something nice for your food truck because it's all one piece and it can allow you to clean it fast so let's get started right away again Frank Valtieres thank you for subscribing to the channel thank you for commenting all your questions and emailing me even though I tell you guys don't email me at rolling burritos food truck at gmail.com I do appreciate the videos that you send the pictures and all the comments again Let's get started, the electrical, the water tanks, and the flooring. Let's go. Flooring update. I got all my weights right there that I use to weigh down my floor so it sticks nice there. My little roller that I use as well. I'm gonna finish up that first half now that I did this part right here, this back half as you can see right here. Now I'm gonna move to that. I'm gonna do that all in one chunk right now and then I'm gonna just roll it right back out and then just let it dry. And as I let that dry, I'm gonna work on a couple things here um, with the electrical, put some outlets, some switches. And if I have time, uh, you know what, probably not that. Under here, I do put a piece of stainless steel. I run a piece of stud right here, of wood from one side to the other. And then I put a piece of stainless steel there. So I might work on that. Little knickknacks here and there. The day is like beautiful. It's like a perfect day today, 70 degrees, a little slight breeze. I sound like a weatherman and uh, I'm taking full advantage. So working on that flooring, that top part to finish that up. Working here on some of this electrical Romex. As you can see, I have all my Romex here labeled. SL means switch leg, switch leg. This is switch leg for the outside light on the right side, uh, the other light as you see there. And then this one is for the outside, this one that is right next to the window on the left side. And then this is a power. This power runs right over here, right behind the wall, right there, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it comes right here. This is a power that goes to the sink side, which is gonna be right over there. So that sink side is gonna get a switch, and then the bottom is gonna be half of a switch outlet for um, my water pump, and the other half is going to be for my propane leak detector. So that's what that outlet's gonna be for there. And the other one's the power from the home run. So that one runs up, and it goes all the way across to this side and then it runs right here where it says this one so this one runs to the other side this one's the home run that runs to the panel outside light and then outside switch leg which is right there so this one this one this one being outside switch leg runs to the switch over there that i showed you guys and then this one's the actual switch leg that runs to the light that's right here which is gonna feed this thing too, which is my rope light. So that's kind of how I have it labeled there. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, one of the most important things with Romex is to label it correctly, because if you don't, you are going to be struggling 100% because if they didn't have a label, they all look the same, right? Just white Romex cables. And it's hard to distinguish which goes where, because if you pull on it, right, you'll never be able to tell what goes where typically so that's how this works on this so we just skin them back with our utility knife right here just skin it all the way back obviously where you have your label don't skin that so you can know what it is and then we just connect it over to our switches I'm gonna be using these switches right here these are just typical single pole switches and then my 15 amp outlets tamper resistant that I'm going to be using there as well so that's the schedule that we have for right now while I wait for these floors to dry. You guys can see I have all my stuff on here. I 
installed this just now so i'm just waiting for this to dry so i can kind of just do my thing on here and finish up this frp wall on this side and then i eventually i'm going to move over to the ceilings but just wanted to give you the grand tour of what i'm working on today on this beautiful well today for me is a saturday on this beautiful saturday afternoon so let's keep on moving so i have great news i updated the spreadsheet that i had from about a year ago now it has more detailed information like the product description the product links a more accurate pricing of what it is right now obviously you can go up and down if you do want access to that reach out to me it will be available for a small cost or you can go video by video and all the product links are also available there but this one is a lot faster Let's do a quick rundown of how i installed these switches as a reminder a switch never receives a neutral neutrals are only for outlets and the actual light fixture on a switch it's always going to have constant power and then it's going to have the switch leg that's why they call it a switch right so it's a switch leg because that's what turns on and finishes the circuit right it allows the energy to flow from here all the way to here so it open it closes or opens the circuit whatever you want to call it turns on the light and um, these are my two outside switch legs so that's one switch and then these two are the inside switch legs so that can is connected to the other terminal on here on the switch it has two terminals on here on a single pole switch and then this bottom one is a power so i just take it from one and then i loop it right over to the other you guys can see there it's just a little a little loop from one to the other that way this wire doesn't get cut you can just skin that wire just a little bit back and then it just pigtails whoop, right over here so these two are my switch legs go up here to this terminal these two are my switch legs go over here to this terminal and then this is the power connected between both and then this is the grounds and then these are the neutrals the neutrals are just going to get buried inside the box and over here my switches are going to be connected these will get the neutral and the power neutral and power neutral and power on the outlets over here switch leg and power that is how we connect switches and outlets in any type of scenario being your house being a trailer this is not counting like a three-way or four-way style switch these are just single pole switches single pole switches which means you can only control it from one location so there we go hopefully that helps you out on the electrical for your food truck so as of today i finished up a couple things one i started putting the switches right there as i had mentioned the other one is i put this piece of frp right here which is going to be where my sinks go because i want to work on my plumbing as soon as possible so i can get big red wrapped up so i can uh, get it ready for sale it is for sale but just so it can be more of a like a show like you guys can actually come see it if you guys wanted to have an interest in it but i am putting my tanks here these are under mount style tanks this is a 30 gallon this is a 20 gallon i've kind of switched it up i've done 25 20 i've done 30 15 and then this one is 30 20. and as you can see the undermount style have they have a little lip right here which i use that to grab onto my three compartment sink you guys will see that all when i bring that three compartment sink into place i just kind of wanted to show you i like to show you guys like the real life of what i'm doing the exact moment uh, obviously the video is uploaded a little bit past when i do it but just so you guys can see this is what i worked on today being a saturday this is what i got accomplished put the little frp here and i bought my switches and outlets that uh, i needed to be able to finish this up and then this is my fan control that i have that came from hood Mart. this is where my quads are gonna go for this is going to be for my food warmer you can see it's dedicated right there dedicated outlet i'm going to make that a quad they call this a quad and then this one's also a quad and that one's going to be probably for my fridges being my uh, four foot sandwich prep table and that's about it and then you can hook up you know little knickknacks on there like your phone or whatever if you wanted to but that one typically is for the food warmer because the food warmer sucks up a lot of electricity but there it is again just waiting for the floor to dry 100 percent. it is dry but i didn't want to like mess with it too much but that's what i'm working on that's the update the tanks are in place and then we're gonna mess around with that a little bit more tomorrow so let's go hopefully you guys are keeping up with the build i know you guys can do this this is not terribly hard it's harder to build a brand new house than it is to build a food trailer and i've done them both so there you go that's what it is let's keep on moving 
the tanks that I buy from Class A Customs, the inch and a half hole does come sealed. So you have to either use a hole saw, which I didn't have, or you can just drill bit around and remove that plastic so you can use it. So I'm laying in the water tanks right here to get a dry fit for what we need to do next, which is bring in a three compartment sink, just to kind of put it in place to see how everything lays out. I do want to move really fast on this trailer. So you guys are going to see the videos just zip on by. This is a plumbing kit that they sell from Class A Customs. That's where I bought these two tanks from. These are a little bit different. This one back here, being my wastewater tank, is 30 gallons on this build. This one's a 20 gallon freshwater tank. That's gonna be my intake hose, which I'm gonna cut a hole right here. And then this goes in there, and then that's what fills up your tanks. That one down there is my, um, what drains the water out so it's going to go like this and straight down that one is the same way it's going to have a waste lever at the bottom right there it's inch and a half and then it's going to have an inch and a half right there that's going to be the main drain line for all the sinks and then that one like i said is a gate valve that one's going to be a um uh, like an air it's like like to, to let air in right so it's just like almost like a vacuum a vacuum um plug and then that one's going to be a i'm just going to plug that one up and then this one runs to the water pump this one right here in the fresh water tank runs to the water pump and then that one is an air vent that's going to go right here to the fill valve so that's kind of how that is the explanation of how i run my tanks that's how it looks at this specific second of my build so right here, you guys can see that little dot right there. That's actually a pilot hole that I drilled outside of the trailer. That's gonna be for my gas lines. So I'm gonna put a 90 degree elbow here of three quarter inch black pipe. And then it's gonna go like right there. It's gonna kind of sit on top of the tank just for support. You don't have to, you can put it snug if you wanted to. I just like to put it right there. So the nipple's gonna be extending a little bit out. These are the tanks that I use. These are under mount style tanks again undermount style tanks and i bought them from class a customs there is no sponsorship no promotion i do not get paid anything from them i just know that that's where i buy my trailers sorry my tanks from so that's going to go like this and then from here it's a three quarter inch pipe that's going to go this way and then kind of this way i'm going to angle it this way because i leave this space empty for a fire suppression tank and that's where it would go right there but that's the black piping that we're working on now Let's finish up the holes. Moving forward here to the next part, I am going to begin the gas lines as well. I'm drilling through my trailer right now. This is going to feed that propane changeover regulator made by Fairview that I use in the front of the trailer. So I'm drilling that big hole. That way I can fit this three quarter inch black pipe across my trailer. The reason why you use the pilot hole is so on the outside or the other side, you have a guide point of where to drill exactly and that way you're not guessing and mess up. So here's my trailer, my original one. I'm trying to get the counts of what I need for my three quarter black piping. So that's a 24 inch, uh, three quarter by 24. And then these little two angles with the little nipple in between. And then I have this one that is, let's take the tape measure out, 12 inches. So we got uh angle angle 12 inches and then i got this monster over here that's six inches and then another nipple with the 90 and then this little guy which is uh just three inches so that's what i need with the little union and then that stops right there easy easy so that's what we're gonna go by right now our home depot that way we get them all situated and we can just lay this pipe in real quick and it'll be ready to roll Look at this, a whole bag of goodies. Let's see what we got here. We got this big 24 inch, uh, three quarter inch pipe. What else we got here? We got the 12 incher. We have all the little fittings that we need. And then over here, we have some plumbing stuff. The three quarter inch 90s. What else, a little nipple there. A 45 degree, they call this a three quarter inch elbow. 45 degree elbow you got two of those but now let's see what fits right there i bought a five inch and a six inch pipe for right there to go outside so let's see which one fits and then we're going to install that 
and then we're gonna call it a day here pretty soon. So let's see what fits there. So as you can see there, we take it piece by piece by piece. This is a 90 degree elbow with a 24 inch piece right there with another 90 degree elbow. I ended up not using 245s because two, 190 worked beautiful. So I don't even know why I started doing 245s. I just, I just kept copying everything that I always did and I never really messed with it, but a 90 degree works beautiful right there. And then here's the rest of it right there. As you can see, it's all done in little pieces. I use my vice grip with my little monkey wrenches there. I don't know if that's the right word for them. Little monkey wrenches with the blue monster pipe thread sealant. I bought this one at Home Depot. I have not been able to find it at Amazon to be able to link it for you guys in the description. But I use that on the threads on the male side. And then I use a ball valve. It's going to be like right here. And that's almost just like a safety shut off that I like to put in as a... Uh, like me, I like to do it. It's not required, but I like to use it just because in case there's a leak, you're able to shut it off right there and not have to go all the way to the front with the propane tanks. But that's what I'm working on, little piece by piece things that we have going on with the propane lines. Let me show you the final product of how it looks, at least for the switches. This is with the cover plate on there. This is an extra deep double double wire mold box so double gang they call it because it obviously has two so it's a double gang wire mold box but this one's an extra deep one it's a little bit more pricey than your normal one i did find it on amazon as well because they don't have it like at your local hardware store they do have these these are just the regular depth of wire mold box so double gang but just the regular one and then as you can see this one is double because sometimes you have a lot of wire so you want to make sure that you don't squish it, bundle it up. So that's why I bought this one. This is where my outlets are going to be. These are my tamper resistant 15 amp outlets. If your county or your fire department asks for GFCI outlets, then you can always add those in there. Just buy a box like that because they'll fit here. They will not fit in a box like this because they are too deep. A GFCI outlet is pretty deep, so it does not fit. They do not require me to have them or else I would put them at least when it comes to a food truck. When you have like a kitchen, like at a house, they do require it or like a bathroom, but not here. So I don't use it. So that's how my two outlets look right there. As I said, they're tamper resistant. I connected the power right here. So the power goes here and then it just loops. As you can see right here, it just loops over to the other side and then this one connects. So it's all connected through the power. And then all my neutrals are all connected right here and as well right there. So that's how this looks. Pretty simple when it comes to, to outlets. Switches <clears throat> sometimes can get a little bit more tricky. My throat's getting dry there, especially when it comes to uh, different switch legs and things like that. But an outlet, it's pretty straightforward. All it has is a power and all it has is a neutral. Unless you're doing a switched outlet that works like this one where I'm doing my uh, water pump. That's a switched outlet. So that one, when you flick the switch, is when it turns on half the outlet. So there's little things you can do to make it a little bit more unique. But when it comes to this one, it's a pretty straightforward installation. Power, neutral, power, neutral. And it's all shared together because it's on the same circuit. So there you go. That's my outlets and how that looks on this side. And then the other side. On the other side, it's right here. I did buy another extra deep box for here i need to install that really fast and that's my little dangly light that's going to be on a switched outlet you guys can see right there outside switch outlet so that's going to go there that's where my other two outlets are going to go and obviously right here i have four outlets two quads that are that i'm going to install so i'm working on that as we speak so real time this is as real time as we can get let's keep moving